empathy for coaches, and that's part of the business. Guys losing their job and moving on. Very seldom does it happen in the middle of the year or this early in the season when a guy really hasn't done anything wrong other than not win football games. And you really hope that all the discussion, all the talk is just background noise because the Maryland Terrapins, a quality team, a bowl team a year ago, you'd like to put a game effort here on the road against Ohio State. Eric, you talked about a beautiful day, and the Buckeye faithful were out very early tailgating. We saw that when we went for coffee this morning, and it's college football at its finest right here. Maryland won the toss. They want to start on defense. The Buckeyes will receive. Short kickoff. That'll be returned. Dontre Wilson, full head of steam. And Wilson barrels out across the 20. And the Buckeyes will start on offense there. And we will see Cardell Jones starting for a ninth consecutive game. He has never lost a game as the Buckeyes starting quarterback. And of course, he was the captain of the ship when they won a national championship a year ago. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of controversy out there, external controversy on who the quarterback should be. And talking to Urban Meyer, we really came across, man, he really cares about the players. You know, I mean, it's not just winning and losing. It's what's best for the players and the program. Little pinch out, trying to get to the edge and breaking a tackle as Ekel Elliott gets to the 23-yard line. Take a look at the numbers. The Buckeyes ranking second in the conference in scoring. Rushing is way up there because of number 15. Really, their problems, turnovers, and red zone issues. Failed play, and that'll be a sack. Losing six yards on the sack. Azubuke, you can do, brings down Cardell Jones. Well, you know that play right there, it's, it's a play action pass. You can see it, and it's a timing pass. That has to be one, two, three, let it go, because the linemen up front are being aggressive. You can't protect any longer than that on that type of play. That is now 20 sacks for the Terrapins. They do that very well. They get to the quarterback. Third down and 10, lined against the 30. This time the pocket holds up. Jones, the throw is low. It is caught, but it'll be short of the first down. Jalen Marshall had a 100-yard day a week ago. He makes the grab, but that will bring up fourth down. You know, that's one of the things there that you always like to tell the receiver. you got to know where the sticks are, because if you catch it and it's a yard short, we got to give the ball up on this end of the field. you got to get that first down yardage. Cameron Johnston leads the Big Ten in punting average. Gives it a boot. Oh, a booming spiral. Will Likely fields it over the shoulder at the eight. Likely's dangerous. And Likely runs into his own man and is tripped up at the 18-yard line. What a punt by Cameron Johnston. It is a 65-yard boot and a 10-yard return to a 55-net-yard punt. Yeah, if you're Urban Meyer on the sideline and you see that punt go like that, you're happy. One is, then you think, did he out-punt the coverage? With a guy like Will Likely back there, those guys ought to get down there and make that coverage. He ran into his own man. Well, as we talked about pregame, Perry Hills making his third start of the year. Started the first two games, then took a back seat to Caleb Rowe, but he's back in there now for game six. Junior out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Little option, they pitch it out, trying to get to the edge. Lee Burn Jacobs, good first down yards, a gain of nine. We'll talk a lot about Lee Burn Jacobs and his brother Tavon Jacobs, both impact players who can make a difference with their speed and quickness. Now, just like last week in Bloomington, Indiana likes to get over that ball at the line of scrimmage and then make adjustments. Maryland doing the same thing to the Buckeyes now. Blitz picked up beautifully. Hills incomplete. It'll bring up third down. You know, to your point on the tempo of the offense, I asked Luke Fickle, watching the film, 
And you'll see it. You know, I like the poise of this quarterback. He takes off and runs, and then he keeps his eyes downfield, but he, he missed throws. But I asked Luke Fickle, he looked at times against Indiana that your defense was late lining up. He says, no, it's kind of by design. If they really don't go hurry, we take our time, and we took look to the sideline also. Third down and one. Wes Brown in as the runner next to Hill. Designed rollout. And there's the game's first first down. That's the third time we've seen Lieber and Jacobs in the mix. That a pickup of 10. Well, it's a, you know, third down is the most important down in football because if you convert it, you keep the ball. I mean, that's that's obvious. But if you're good on third down, normally you're pretty good as an offense. Brandon Ross, Kennan joins Jr. in the backfield. And another design rollout, this time to the left. Hills took a hit and throws it out of play. Raekwon McMillan forcing Hills to throw it before he wanted to. Take a look at the Buckeyes' numbers defensively. Some work to do, shoring up defense against the run. They're just 10th in the Big Ten at stopping the run. Raekwon McMillan, can't blame him, though. He is tied for the Big Ten lead with 54 tackles through five games. There's McMillan. Didn't play much in the fourth quarter a week ago. Was dealing with a migraine replaced by Cam Williams. Stumbling through that hole, Brandon Ross. You know, the Buckeyes, as far as their defensive playing call, a little more aggressive this game. We saw Raekwon McMillan go through. Joshua Curry tried to run through right there. Luke Finkel said, you know, we're playing good defense, but we got to be more aggressive. He said, I got to be more aggressive as the play caller to make things happen. Buckeyes want the ball back. Third and seven. Again, Wes Brown, the third down back, checks into the game. And movement. Offside. Defense, number 97. Moving in the neutral zone, causing the offensive player to react. Five yard penalty range. Third down. Don Willard, our game referee, and that's Joey Bosa. Yeah, and you see Joey Bosa, he's not lined up at his normal defensive end position. He's moved inside. You know, we talked about he only had a half a sack on the year. If you know where he's going to line up, you can game plan him. If you move him around, it's hard to do. So third and seven turns into third and two. Ross. Close to the first down marker. I think if he continued going north, he would have had it easily. Fell to the west. And it's going to be close. Well, they're going to give him forward progress. So another first down, the second one on this drive for Maryland. Yeah, that was a poor run by Ross. When you're trying to go for the first down, you got to level your shoulders. you got to be your own blocker. you got to make sure you get it. When he went to the sideline, it could have been disastrous. Be your own blocker. I like that. BYOB. Some confusion on that Maryland sideline. They call timeout. Randy Edsel, his offense up to a good start. They don't want to start slipping up now. We're just getting started. Back to Columbus in a moment. Choice on their part. <laughs> well, Ohio State's already given up a couple of first downs to this Maryland Terrapin offense. Maryland working under the leadership of Perry Hills, the junior from Pittsburgh Central Catholic High School. Produced pretty good quarterbacks. Yeah. Dan Marino, uh, Mark Bulger. Now Perry Hills, the junior, under center. They fake the handoff. Play action. Hills has a man wide open. DJ Moore. Touchdown, Terrapins. Number one team in the country got victimized by number one. DJ Moore, a true freshman, getting behind the defense. Well, you mentioned Hills went under center, did a little play action pass. Raekwon McMillan ran through, and Bombell just got burnt. Home run. 
Well, we didn't know what we'd get out of this Maryland Terrapin team, but they get a three and out stop on defense, and then they get the ball, convert a couple of third downs, and get a touchdown to take a 7 nothing lead five minutes into this one. Well, you know, when a guy is that wide open, sometimes the quarterback, you lay it up because you think, hey, I've got him. He almost underthrew him there and gave Von Bell a chance to recover. See the linebacker run through, they pick him up, going deep. As Mike Hall would say, they're playing a game of wide open, and they just won right there. And Barry Hills, who just got his starting quarterback job back, is thrilled with the early success. This is the type of thing that you can feed off of if you're the Terrapins. Well, what it does, it gives you confidence. You know, I've been in those situations where all of a sudden the guys come out and they say, hey, you know, we can play with these guys. And then the defensive guys over there, they see what the offensive guys do. They stay in confidence. They get some juice on the sideline. As we've mentioned many times, it's been a rough week for these players and the coaches, and they're enjoying the heck of it right now. Maryland won significant games on the road a year ago. They won at Michigan. They won at Penn State. They actually were better at, on the road than they were at home. Dontre Wilson takes a knee. Well, this is a huge day on BTN. We've got three games all involving ranked teams. You got the 13th and the 18th ranked team in the country, Northwestern and Michigan Ann Arbor. That'll be at 3.30 Eastern. And tonight, 8 o'clock Eastern time, Connor Cook and the fourth ranked Michigan State Spartans taking on Rutgers. Oh, man. You got the number one team in the country, the number four team, two ranked teams in Ann Arbor, Northwestern, and Michigan. And Rutgers gets their best player back. Monte Rue is back, and uh, I'm sure they'll try to get him the ball. Ohio State has now trailed at some point in four of its first six games. The number one team in the country. This is Braxton Miller. So they give him a carry. He picks up three. Braxton Miller is still third among all FBS players in terms of career rushing yardage. Over 3,200 yards for Braxton Miller. The Lions share coming when he was the quarterback. Now Ezekiel Elliott in at the tailback. This is Elliott. Big hole for Elliott. He's out to the 40-yard line. 12-yard gain for the junior. Well, you watch Elliott right here. Watch him how he keeps his shoulders square and has great patience to let the time, let the blocking evolve, and then he makes the cutback side. Quick snap and a drop. That's been an issue. Michael Thomas unable to catch that heater. Will likely was on the defense, but that's a ball that Michael Thomas, with his talent, should be able to make the play on. Absolutely. Cardell Jones put that ball in front of him, right in his hands. He should catch that every time. 77 career catches, Michael Thomas. He'll have to wait on number 78. Here's Don Willard. Offside, defense number 41. Elevated the quarterback, five yard penalty in the ring. Second down. Jesse Anabonum. Well, you'll see, he, he jumps right off. It's not even close. And you saw the tight end look at him like, where are you going, man? You know, no one moved. Anabonum from Silver Spring, Maryland. Same hometown as former Buckeye great, Sean Springs. All-American cornerback. Second down and five. A gift five yards for Ohio State. This time the pass is caught. Thomas out across the 15 to the 44-yard line. Jalen Brooks with the tackle, but a gain of 12. Looks like a very simple play, but 
The ball's got to get out quick. It's got to be on the money. And the wide receiver out there's got to make the block. Good job. That's Braxton Miller making the block out in space. And that sprung Thomas for the 12 yards. It thanks to Elliott. Jones, tons of time. Now Elliott to the 35. It is amazing when you talk to the coaching staff at Ohio State. Some of the compliments they give Ezekiel Elliott. We know what a sensational runner he is. But Ed Warner, the offensive quarter, told us he's the best running back he's ever seen without the ball in his hands. You know why he says that? Because he plays hard every play. And he's one of those guys, when he doesn't have his hand on the ball, he's hustling downfield. And he's making a dominant block on a defender. He comes from good stock coached against his father when you're out in the uh, Big Eight. Yes, yeah, Stacy Elliott played at Missouri. Wraparound handoff, Curtis Samuel. And Samuel had a hard time getting going. Good defense play, Jermaine Carter, that rock. Now the middle linebacker makes the tackle. Jermaine Carter doesn't miss too many tackles. Third down and one. And they give it to Elliott. He's going to get that virtually every time. Let's go to Mike Hall for a T-Mobile studio update. All right, Eric and Glenn, we got a first score in the Iowa-Illinois game. This is C.J. Beathard to George Kittle, the third straight game with a touchdown catch for Kittle. The extra point somehow was missed, so it's 6-0 Iowa. Thank you, Mike. People talk about Purdue being quarterback you. Iowa has become tight end you. Fantastic tight ends over the years. Coming on Kirk Barrett's program. Samuel in motion. Cardell Jones looks like a busted play, but he makes something out of it. He gets down to the 25. Talking to Urban Meyer about Cardell Jones, he says, you know, he doesn't bring to this position the running ability of a Braxton Miller or a JT Barrett, but in my estimation, when he pulls it down and goes north and south, he's a force to be reckoned with. Was that a broken play? I think it was a broken play, yeah. They had the, they had the Samuel going to the end round, they missed the handoff, and he just took it north and south. JT Barrett is now in for the first time. Cardell Jones on the sideline, the sophomore Barrett, out of the shotgun. Designed quarterback run. And Barrett, not the fastest guy, but he always seems to fall forward. He picks up six yards. Look at the red zone numbers this season. Limited time, JT Barrett, two for three, 12 yards. Cardell Jones, yikes. Two for ten, a lot of drops on his watch, but obviously that's a concern point for Urban Meyer. I, I told you we'd see J.T. Barrett in the red zone, and now you got it. You see things. I love it. No, because that's what I would do. And I got a guy like that sitting on the bench. False start. False start. Offense, under 57. Five-yard penalty remains. First down. I think it's on Chase Ferris. There's Chase Ferris, graduate student out of Illyria, Northeast Ohio. This is a veteran offensive line. They've been together the last two years, extremely close bunch, tough guys. They've started as a unit for the first six games together. First down and 15. Five receivers in the game, and Barrett, another designed quarterback run, and this time, gets brought down by Anna Bonham. You know, let's go back to that illegal procedure by Chair Chase Ferris. This is one of the things that was driving Urban Meyer crazy was the penalties in the red zone, turnovers in the red zone, drop balls in the red zone, get down in the red zone, put JT Barrett in, they get a legal procedure. Braxton Miller in the backfield next to Barrett. Winding down. The give is to Miller. Ohio State has so many wonderful weapons. But right now, things aren't working. Ezekiel Elliott and Cardell Jones both 
watching from the sideline. Well, you watch the offensive line play, and it's just not clean. They're getting penetration. Chase Farris has got to get down more and get that linebacker shield, knock him past the hole, and they have nothing to go. Nowhere to go. Elliott back into the game in the backfield. It's third down at 16. There, his pass is caught. Thomas inside the 10. He's got it up for the first down. 20 yards on third and 16. Well, this is what they were missing. Miss throws down in the red zone. He puts that right on the money. First down. Now they're looking at a scoring opportunity. Buckeyes went quickly to the ball, trying to snap it. But we've got a Terrapin down. That's Anthony Nixon, senior safety, out of Pittsburgh. He's the most physical safety that they have. Been very steady all season long. When we were talking about red zone problems with Urban Meyer, and he hinted he might do something different, I said, might we see robust formation and for all-time Ohio State players, that was Woody Hayes' goal line offense. Robust. No, robust. Dead T formation, give it to the fullback, and he kind of looked at me and just laughed, so I discounted that right away. Yeah, I don't think Woody Hayes ever had his quarterback out of the pistol when they had the ball at the five-yard line. This is not a Rex Kern formation. First down and goal. Tight end Nick Bennett in motion. And Elliott stonewalled at about the three. Alvin Hill, who checked in at one of the safety spots, replacing Nixon, credited with that tackle. There's Alvin Hill. Experienced player out of Locust Grove, Georgia. Red zone. No passing touchdowns in the red zone for Ohio State through five games. Bear calls his own number, and Barrett's in. Touchdown, Ohio State. We saw that a bunch of year ago. JT Barrett is dynamite close to the goal line. Jack Willoughby will come on for the extra point. And we are tied at seven. The Buckeyes start out sluggishly. They bring in JT Barrett, and they score 7-7 seven, seven here at the Horseshoe. Every day on my way to class. Let's just put it that way. JT Barrett. What a revelation he was a year ago. 2014 Big Ten quarterback and freshman of the year. What a luxury to have him just cooling his heels through the first five games and now able to step in when needed to help things out in the red zone. Will likely will not get a chance to run this one out. Touchback. More football from the horseshoe when we return. Mayor Collins, coach you played in this venue, you coached in this venue, you coached against Ohio State in this venue, really is nothing like it. It's a lot more fun playing and coaching here than against them, I can tell you that. It's a hostile environment, but it's college football at its finest. 4.23 remaining in our opening quarter. Terrapin scored a touchdown the first time they had the football. Perry Hills victimized by a drop. That's a ball that should have been caught Tavon Jacobs. Joey Bosa was bearing down on Perry Hills. Joey Bosa does not have a sack on the year, only a half sack, but he has gotten consistent pressure. Yeah, when you know when Hill delivers the ball on the money under that pressure and takes that hit, the wide receiver, man, you've got to catch that ball.
Maryland with three first downs. First time they had the football, including the long touchdown pass. Joshua Perry, senior captain from Galena, Ohio, makes the tackle close to the line of scrimmage. Perry is a 3.0 student. Major is consumer and family financial services. Wants to get into the home building business when his football career is over with. This guy who said no to Stanford was offered by the Stanford Cardinal and said, I'd rather play for the Scarlet and Gray. Well, Marshawn Lattimore just entered as the nickel back for the Buckeyes, part of their third down back. Third and nine, Hills escapes the pressure. Trying to direct traffic, he can run. And he's pushed out of bounds at the 35 by Lattimore, but I think that's going to be enough for the first down. Perry Hills is the best run pass threat that the Terrapins have at quarterback. Mm, they're going to say he is just short of the marker. And Randy Edsel. I thought the Buckeyes got a very favorable spot there. The short of the line of the game. Plays on the further review. And Randy Edsel wants to make sure that that call in that spot is accurate. It's fourth down and one right now, but was this a bad spot, Coach? Well, you can see they lose contain. The defensive end gets too high, and he's running for his life, and he goes down. Mm. I think it's a bad spot. I think he made it. Yeah, he's... Looks like that ball is on the 35-yard line. Yeah, and they marked it short of the 35. Considerably short, almost a yard short. All right, Edsel. He is as professional as they come. He's been a head coach for a long time. 12 years at UConn, five years here at Maryland. And distractions aren't going to get to him. He's going to call the game he wants to call. He's going to make the decisions he needs to make. With his focus only on this three-hour window, taking on the number one team in the country. Eric, when you're coaching, there's a million things that go through your mind, even when you don't have rumors of losing your job, that go through your mind. But when you walk on that field, and they tee it up, and you're playing, it seems like you're oblivious to everything else. And that's what you should do as a coach. You owe it to your players and your coaches. So this playing, this play is being looked at. There's Marshawn Lattimore made the tackle, but it looked like Hills pushed his way to the 35-yard line. Yeah, you see his feet. His feet never stepped out of bound prior to that. And you know, you gotta be impressed with Perry Hills. He's a strong guy because Lattimore came up there. That was a heck of a hit, and he still carried him backwards. Hills with experience, not just the two starts at the beginning of the year, but he also had seven starts in 2012. Didn't start at all in 13 and 14, was banged up. But this year, won the job as the opening day starter. Was replaced by Caleb Rowe, but now back in the mix. So add it all together, this is his 10th career start. It's a lot of experience at this level. When you talk about the toughness that he showed right there, what would you expect from a quarterback from Pittsburgh Central Catholic? After further review, the runner did reach the line again. game. We first and 10, Maryland, at the 35-yard line. So, Maryland, a fresh set of downs. And Randy Edsel has to be thrilled. The Terrapins coming into this game, the second worst third down offense in the Big Ten. But today, they're three for three. Awful close, but they got it. It's all that matters. And we have a Wildcat quarterback, Shane Cockrell. The sophomore from Baltimore is going to take the snap out of the pistol. So this is a look that we have not seen out of Maryland. Ty Johnson, true freshman runner, tries to get to the edge, only picks up a yard against a very speedy Ohio State defense. So that now means we've seen four different quarterbacks take snaps for Randy Edsel through the first six games. And we're still in the first quarter. <laughs> Perry Hills re-enters the game. 
Shane Cockrell stays in the game, but he's not the Wildcat quarterback. Instead, he is flanking Hills with Brandon Ross. They fake it to Ross. Bosa lets him slip out of his grasp. Hills in trouble, and Bosa finally. Oh, it's not Bosa, but he's brought down. It's Taekwon Lewis with the sack. Loss of seven. Well, you can see, you know, Bosa loses contain here. He goes to, he misses the tackle before he went too deep past the quarterback. But last time they got burned, but they rallied. They got to the football and they got a big play. Lewis had a sensational game last week in Bloomington. Three and a half tackles for losses. Rated out as a champion, according to the Buckeye coaches. Maryland trying to remain perfect on third down, but this is third and 16. Bosa again blows it up, falls loose, and incomplete. I'll tell you what, Joey Bosa's been a terror so far in the first quarter. Well, yeah, he's going hard. Once again, they moved him from that defensive end position to the tackle position, and he got a great jump on that start on the snap right there, and he was in the backfield, and Man, they are lucky. Maryland's lucky that wasn't a turnover. That ball almost stuck in the face mask of Sam Hubbard. Fourth down at 16. Nicholas Pritchard, true freshman punter, comes on. Curtis Samuel back deep for the Buckeyes. A flag is down on the field. Oh, my! And a flag down on the catch. was back deep to receive the kick and he was just obliterated by the safety Davis Jalen Marshall did not call for the fair catch so flags 50 yards apart from each other one at the line of scrimmage and one where Marshall caught the football. I think that may have been reversed. There were two fouls on the play, and they were all set. Personal foul, nothing to snapper. Defense number two. Interference with the opportunity to catch the kick. Kicking team number 21. Those fouls offset. Replay, fourth down. Man, I don't. Yeah, they called a penalty on Lattimore. Hmm. I really don't see the penalty on Lattimore. He made a move on the center. He didn't rough the center. I think that's a bad call. So we'll do it again. Jalen Marshall stays in as the punt returner. This guy's got guts. Pritchard's kick, low spiral, and Marshall with a full head of steam. And Marshall trying to atone for a couple of fumbles a week ago. A good return out across the 50 to the 41. 27 yards on the return for Jalen Marshall. Let's go to my call for a T-Mobile studio update. Eric, the Illini have answered the Hawkeyes from earlier. This is Keyshawn John from four, uh, Keyshawn Vaughn from four yards out. That's the first rushing touchdown the Iowa defense has given up all year. Extra point is good, so Illinois leads. Thank you, Mike. Illinois coming off an impressive win at home a week ago against Nebraska. Yeah, that's a pretty good tackle by Anthony Nixon on Jalen Marshall because he's awful elusive. Good to see Nixon back into the game. Left last series. After a tackle close to the goal line. Cardell Jones back in at quarterback. His pass is caught. Braxton Miller makes a great move. And Miller down the sideline. There is a flag down on the field. That flag coming from the secondary. It would be a gain of 14. Oh. 
personal foul. Face mask. Defense number 48. 43, excuse me. You know, it's half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. They're calling on Jesse and a Bonham. You think you got Braxton Miller? Think again. Might be the most dynamic player in the country out in space. There's the reach in on the face pass. They called it on Jalen Brooks, not on 41. Braxton Miller is now going to be the quarterback. Miller and Elliott in the backfield. Designer on, and Miller barrels down to the five-yard line. This is the most diverse we've seen Ohio State on offense in 2015. Well, it's surely the most diverse we've seen them in the red zone. What they were doing wasn't working. They hit it at, hit it at changes. We're seeing a lot of changes. And now for the third consecutive snap, a different quarterback, J.T. Barrett, in the game. Down to the one goes Elliott. Anthony Nixon saved a touchdown. That'll be another first down for Ohio State. Quickly back to the line of scrimmage. Barrett still in at quarterback. And I don't think Elliott made it. He did not. So, both teams have a long walk in their future. 15 minutes in the books. The quarter is over. We will go 99 yards to the other end of the field. The second quarter will get underway. A set Presented by FanDuel. Tonight on BTN. Getting ready to start a second quarter. Let's take you back to that... Uh, penalty we had on the punt a yeah, moment ago. Yeah, roughing the center. Let's look at it right in here. You know, the rule reads that you can't hit the center for a count for safety reasons, and I totally agree with that. You know, it's an in-between call, right? I see what the umpire sees right now. He sees the collision between the center and Lattimore, number two. It looked like, to me, Lattimore was just trying to rush through the A-gap, not hurt him. Well, Ohio State has made it down to the one-yard line. Second down and goal. JT... Barrett out of the pistol. Ezekiel Elliott next to him. Barrett calls his own number, and JT struggles to get back to the line of scrimmage. Jermaine Carter with force comes up and makes the tackle. It'll bring up third down. Jermaine Carter's not going to let you just walk into the end zone. One play. As strong as Ezekiel Elliott is down here, when you get down that close, you think the ball would go to number 15. Elliott's got it! Touchdown, Ohio State! The ninth rushing touchdown of the season for the junior from St. Louis. Ohio State leads for the first time. Jack Willoughby, the extra point attempt. Ohio State finding a way to use all of their elite skill position guys. Elliott, Barron, Jones, Miller, They've all contributed. Well, he has been very open to using his great skill position guys in the best spots where they could be successful. We've seen Braxton Miller take snaps as the quarterback out in space with pitch outs. JT Barrett has been the red zone quarterback. And Ezekiel Elliott at the end of the day, maybe the most powerful back in America. Will likely not able to take this one out of the end zone. Well, coming up on Wednesday, 9.30 Eastern time on BTN, Big Ten Elite with Ohio State as the focus.
This is probably the most unbelievable season that anyone has ever been through. I'm still trying to wrap my head around what we actually did. We got as hot as a team can get right at the right time. The 2014 Ohio State football team, no other team in the history of football had as much adversity at the quarterback spot as they did, yet somehow they prevailed. An incredible season and a wonderful, wonderful inside look on Big Ten. Uh, uh, you got to see that show. I previewed it and I watched it over and over again. For the real football fan, you'll love every second of it. Braxton Miller, JT Barrett, Cardell Jones, all in that quarterback mix and at the end of the day Ohio State dominating wins in the first college football playoff third time that Maryland's had the football Perry Hills makes a nice move to get across the 30 yard line pick up of six let's check in with Rick Pizzo Rick well Eric Perry Hills got the start because Randy Edsel believes he's the best decision maker remember Edsel played quarterback at Syracuse I asked him this week if that understanding of the position made him more or less frustrated with his quarterbacks he said way more frustrated some of these decisions just have left me scratching my head so far so good for Hills that first drive was sensational good slippery move Brandon Ross picks up eight yards Brandon Ross right on the threshold of personal history he now has 14 rushing yards in the afternoon that means he has gone over the 2000 mark in his career 2001 yards next to the name of Brandon Ross the senior from Newark Delaware so congratulations to Brandon Ross been a heck of a ride again pick up of three yards let's go to my call for a T-Mobile studio update Eric Perry Hill's a new starting QB in your game Indiana has a new one as well it's Xander Diamant and he's making the Nittany Lion defenders miss him we're tied up at seven early in the second Xander Diamant is an interesting guy he plays the quarterback position differently than most Los Angeles kid who is not big. Fun to watch. Second down at seven. Hills. Another pass that should have been caught. Both teams dealing with the drop seats. Amba at a towel. Unable to wrap that one up. It'll bring up third down at seven. Well, he's under a little pressure here, but watch Perry Hills. He keeps his eyes downfield. He puts the ball right on the money. Bosa's come so close to get in the sack so far this afternoon. One thing about Bosa, he's come very close. You know he's not going to stop. He's going to keep playing as hard as he can every play. And Hills has now thrown four consecutive incompletions. Since the touchdown thrown to D.J. Moore, Hills has not completed a pass. Fourth down at seven. You know, if I was Maryland, I would not get away from that running game with Brandon Ross. They, they're moving the ball, and I think that's what they have to do to take some pressure off the quarterback. And Brandon Ross is capable. You know, he had 130 yards earlier in the year against West Virginia. He's a good back. Brad Craddock will come and punt the football away. Craddock and Pritchard alternate. As the punter. Ooh, that ball is loose. And it's going to be down to inside the five. Came really close to hitting a Buckeye. It's a 54 yard punt with no return. Now, BTN's award winning original series is back. It's the show with an unprecedented look inside the Big Ten season. The Journey Big Ten Football 2015. It returns Wednesday, 9 o'clock Eastern Time on BTN. That'll be a solid hour of television. You got The Journey followed by Big Ten Elite. One of the stories this week. Tanner McAvoy, Wisconsin. A two-way guy. <laughs> plays offense and defense. Oh, boy. I love that. Yeah. You know, we've seen him. He's a valuable player for the Badgers. And defense, quarterback, wide receivers. He can do it all. Buckeyes start in the shadow of their own goal line. Trying to move the ball and get some comfortable 
working area. That is Cardell Jones, who barrels forward for a couple of yards. Ohio State has had five different rushers. Two different rushers have scored touchdowns in Barrett and Elliott. If you can recruit talent like Urban Meyer can, why not use all that talent? If you recruit that talent, you've got to use it all. These guys, these highly talented players, came to Ohio State to play. And when you're a skilled player, you want your hands on the ball. Elliott trying to break a tackle, unable to do so. Good defensive play. So far, you got to be impressed with the Maryland defense controlling the line of scrimmage. There's absolutely nowhere for him to run there. Chandler Burkett doesn't normally play, but moving into the 2 deep because of injuries, a bunch of linebackers out over the last couple of weeks. Jefferson Ashuru, Brett Zanato. Dangerous pass. That was almost picked off. Jones was looking for Paris Campbell, but good defense by Will Likely, maybe the most instinctive defensive player in the entire country, what he can do. Yeah, Will Likely is a great athlete. He has great vision when playing zone defense, and he's got great anticipation, as you can see right here. He's got his hand around his back, but a no call. That is now eight passes broken up for Will Likely. No one on Maryland has more than one besides him. Deep spiral. Johnston sends Likely back to the 36. Likely still on his feet out to midfield. 60-yard punt, 14-yard return for Likely. Cardell Jones took a hit. That hit low. Actually limped off the field. Back in a moment. the first time the Ohio State marching band played Hang On Sloopy. And they're still around. And the Buckeye faithful love Brutus Buckeye, and they love that song. It's actually the official rock song of the state of Ohio, Hang On Sloopy. There's Brutus, 50 years in that costume. Great starting field position for Maryland. Hills, he's missed on his last four passes. Throws a jump ball out of bounds. Dangerous pass. Let's go down to Rick Pizzo. Guys, you may have seen Cardale Jones limp off the field after that last unsuccessful third down. No worries, it appears. Jones actually shook off any help, said he didn't need a trainer, sat down right next to the rest of the quarterbacks, put on the headset, said, I'm fine, but certainly appears to be frustrated. Thank you, Rick. And we'll keep an eye on that. Both touchdowns scored by Ohio State. Scored on the watch of JT Barrett, who seems to be the new red zone quarterback. Hills in trouble in the backfield, goes down. Adolphus Washington wrapped him up. Loss of five. Yeah, you can see in Washington, he, he beats the guard and makes the play. He's playing on the other side of the line of scrimmage. Big play. He's got the ability to make that inside move and not let the ball carry get outside him. Washington with 10 tackles, a career high, a week ago against Indiana. Wes Brown checks in the third down back. Third and 15 for the Terps. Three-man rush, and Hills has to throw it away. Adolphus Washington was in his face. So great starting field position for Maryland, and they retreat. They lose five yards on that drive. Well, you're right. Washington, he provided the pressure. And Sam Hubbard, the defensive end, number six, was all over the screen man. That play had no chance. Nicholas Pritchard is the punter. Jalen Marshall, second in the Big Ten and punt return average. He's back at his own 20. Marshall gets out of the way, and this one will be a touchback. So, Ohio State back on offense. Let's send it to Mike Hall for a T-Mobile studio update. 
Iowa Hawkeyes still undefeated and now have the lead over Illinois thanks to Jordan Canzeri with the catch from C.J. Beathard. Extra point is good. They're back up by six. Eric? Thank you so much. Mike Hall. He and Rick Pizzo duke it out every year for the busiest men in television sports. Those guys are everywhere at all times. Two of the best in the business, those guys. Dave Repson stays pretty busy, too. Little pop pass. That's going to be Braxton Miller. And Miller is tackled right at the line of scrimmage. A gain of one. Will Likely with the sure tackle. Likely just 175 pounds, but unafraid of mixing it up. Yeah, this is one of the staples. Direct snap to the quarterback. He flips it forward to the H-back coming around, but you got to block Will Likely. Guy's a good player. Great position. Now they go back with that power run game to get the ball to the 25-yard line and bring up a third down and five. Ezekiel Elliott has been the workhorse as per usual. There's Jacoby Bourne, the United States Marine Corps leader of the game. He is a local kid from right here in Columbus. He's a Pickerington native. Jacoby Bourne, third Ohio State offensive player in his family. Zach Bourne, Justin Bourne, Jacoby Bourne. And his dad played at Michigan. How does that happen? My goodness. Huh? Jacoby Bourne, he is a smart guy. He's got that GPA close to 4.0. Part of the line to gain. The play's under further review. Ruling on the field is it's fourth down and one but they'll check that spot and make sure that it's where the football should be. yard line to me was he down there didn't look like the knee or any body part was down yeah you can see where they might have thought the knee was down it looked like he hit the ground and the ball was right on the 30 yard line you can see that the trouble with spotting the ball in those short yardage situations like that because things happen so fast. For further review, the ruling on the field stands. Fourth down. So Ohio State is just a whisker short of the line to gain. What's the decision here, Coach? Well, you know, if I had the center, if the quarterback under center, I would sneak it. But they don't do that. And fourth and one. Cardale Jones is the quarterback, and he's going to be out of the pistol. I'd give it to Elliott. Buckeyes call timeout. When Maryland, they hold their water. Maryland well coached defensively. Keith Dudzinski, their defensive coordinator, had his Terps ready. Time out on the field, back to the horseshoe in a moment. Myers Bunch just tried to draw Maryland offsides a moment ago. That didn't work. They called timeout, and the offense remains on the field. Cardell Jones, the quarterback. And they give it to Elliott. He's got the first down. Yannick and Gokway the tackle, but it's enough for Elliott to move the chains. Well, he's a big, strong runner, but that's a big gamble on this position of the field for Urban Meyer. So first down. Elliott. 
to the 36. Ezekiel Elliott coming off a career day. Last Saturday in Bloomington, 274 yards. He tied Keith Byers for the second most productive rushing day in the history of Ohio State football. Only Eddie George had a more productive day. Jones, little swing pass to Elliott, makes a good grab. This kid's got great hands. He's got the first down. Avery Thompson stops him, but a pickup of 11. How many running backs the caliber of Ezekiel Elliott, that strong, that big, had the hands and catch that ball? I mean, that would be a good catch for a wide receiver level on a running back. They give it to him up the gut, picks up a yard, maybe two. Let's go down to Rick Pizzo. Yo, Glenn, I was wondering, before the game, I watched your Kobe Bourne and Cardale Jones working on the quarterback center exchange from under center, yet you don't utilize it on fourth and one with a 240-pound quarterback. Surprising to me. Well, they, they don't do it very much. Well, I, when he rushed up there, I was kind of surprised. They tried to draw him off. You would think down in the red zone, if that was part of their package, that's when you would see that. It's not really what they do. I know that the former offensive coordinator, Tom Herman, just didn't believe in it. Wide open man, Braxton Miller, down inside the 20. A better pass, and that's a touchdown, but the Buckeyes will take the big gainer. Well, you know, Braxton Miller, a former quarterback, he's going back to the huddle, and he's saying, come on, Cardell, I'm wide open. You got to put the ball on the money. I had to leap and make you look good. Buckeyes quick to the line of scrimmage. Looking at the end zone. a concerted effort to get the ball to their playmakers all of them and technically that was a red zone opportunity so Cardale Jones throws the touchdown pass in the red zone but well, Cardale Jones he's had some misfires in the past and JT Barrett goes down there and so Cardale says you know I better start performing down here where I've seen the last of the red zone Willoughby remains perfect Buckeyes convert the fourth down and one, and that leads to the touchdown to Braxton Miller. The dynamic player from Dayton with a touchdown. Braxton Miller, a touchdown, capping off a gutsy drive for Ohio State. Well, let's not forget Urban Meyer's decision for going for it on fourth down. Gutsy call right here. Keeps the drive going on it. Here Braxton Miller is, it's a coverage bust by Maryland. He is wide open. A poor throw by Cardell Jones, a great catch by Braxton Miller. And then Cardell Jones comes back, looks off the safety, pumps once, finds Braxton Miller for the touchdown. Awful good execution there. That is now 87 total touchdowns accounted for by Braxton Miller in his career, either passing, rushing, or receiving. Will Likely with a chance. Full head of steam. Oh, and Likely goes down at the 12. Wonderful special teams for the Buckeyes. Craig Feta, the special teams tackle. Watch this play. I mean, look at that. I mean, that's perfect. He gets his head across the belly, wraps up. And do you think this guy's excited? Huh? <laughs> that's what football's about right there. Huh? You know, he's as local as they come from Bishop Watterson right here in town. Getting a chance to play in front of 100,000. Craig Feta, special teams play of the day so far. Last five plays have gone backwards for Maryland. Darren Lee comes off the edge and a great play call. Perry Hills right up the gut. Quarterback keeper 
And he's got a good first down gain, a pickup of 17. Wait, well, someone's got to get out of their gap when you have a play like this and you have the quarterback take it right up the middle. You can see the middle linebacker, Perry, Joshua Perry, who's normally really good, turned his shoulders over, pursued that, and that's why that play went. Maryland's longest run. Ross in the backfield next to Hill. Freshman tight end Avery Edwards lets it slip through the fingers. They like Avery Edwards, but a true freshman still learning how to play at this level. There is a flag down. Personal foul. Clipping. Offense, number 66. 15 yard penalty. With the first down. Andrew Zeller, senior right guard. Well, you can see him right in right there. As the play develops, he goes down in and he clips the nose guard from behind. Player safety is paramount. Good call by the official. Here. So the ball is moved all the way back inside the 15. Perry Hill started out with his hair on fire. Two for four in the first drive, including a touchdown pass. He is misfired on his last seven attempts. Make it eight consecutive incompletions. Let's go to my call for a T-Mobile studio update. Eric, Christian Hackenberg's averaging only one touchdown pass per game this season. He's already got two in the first half. This one a 39-yarder to Deshaun Hamilton. Another missed extra point, believe it or not. So it's still only a six-point lead for Penn State. I think Ohio State will vouch for the fact that Kevin Wilson's Indiana team is much improved this year. When I watch film, I, I would sing the same place, especially defensively. They're a lot better front seven. Hills keeps it, can't get away. He'll go down. Tommy shut the senior from Chicago. Well, you saw Hills there. He pulled the ball. He tried to run. But against this defense, with that athleticism and speed, you cannot make a cut toward the sideline. You got to keep going north and south. Ohio State seems to be playing with an energy that we haven't seen through the first month and a half of 2015. On third and 26, Wes Brown spins out to the 23-yard line. You know, when you say that energy, I don't think any of us are inferring they're not playing hard. The difference is, when you're a team of high stakes caliber, you've got to set the tone for the game. And I think they've been playing down to the competition. Getting by, doing a good job, but not totally dominating. Nicholas Pritchard. True freshman punter. Jalen Marshall back deep. Low line drive, it'll bounce. At the 38, and Marshall dangerous. He was close to that football as it spun by. Stay tuned for the Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report. Dave, Jerry, and Howard will be along from our Chicago studio with all the scores, highlights, and news from around the Big Ten. Three games going on as we speak. A couple of afternoon games, Northwestern and Michigan, right here on BTN. Both teams ranked in the top 20. Minnesota at Purdue and also Wisconsin at Nebraska and then tonight right here on BTN you've got the fourth ranked team in the country Mark D'Antonio's bunch Michigan State out of New Jersey taking on the Scarlet Knights Cardell Jones still the quarterback throws a heater that's caught Michael Thomas hangs on to that one out to the 40 yard line did you say he threw a heater oh my goodness <laughs> That was a blur going out there, and that's what you got to do. You got to get the ball out there in a hurry on the money so that these skilled players can do something with it. You can see he pushes off, he catches the ball, 
breaks to the outside. That defender's got to force him back inside. And flags all over. Ball start. Offense number 54. Five yard penalty remains. First down. Billy Price out of Youngstown. Yeah, you'll see him right there. He'll. I'm sorry. The, just a little bit moving there. It was Billy Price, the left guard. Who moved. So first down and 15. Under four minutes to play in the first half. Cardell Jones wants to keep it. Zigging and zagging out to the 40. Lowers the head and gets to the 44. He took on Jermaine Carter. That's a fair fight. They're both about 250 pounds. Well, I don't think it's a fair fight because Cardell Jones had a running start out. Watch this. Another fastball caught by Tom. Michael Thomas quick and give him a chance 31 yards well the corner gave Thomas a big cushion and the problem with that is that when he catches the ball he can turn around and get squared away and then it's moves versus moves and you saw the better athlete won there Thomas coming into this one 77 career catches he has got four today so he's up to 81 in his career just a junior wrapped up now remember a week ago Ezekiel Elliott was human in the first half before going crazy in the second half with three touchdown runs of over 50 yards Braxton Miller back on the field well you remember the keys to the game I said for Maryland was all eyes on Elliott if everybody's keying him and trying to stop him and selling out it's tough for him. Braxton Miller calling the shots very comfortable in this role three years the starting quarterback for Ohio State design quarterback keeper looking for Rome there's a flag down as Miller is tackled at the 19 only offense number 50 10 yard penalty repeat second down Jacoby Boren the senior center let's go down to Rick for more on Braxton Miller well, Eric, the concerted effort to get Braxton involved today started well before kickoff. When I walked with the Ohio State team from Skull Session inside St. John Arena to Ohio Stadium, before they began the walk, Urban Meyer grabbed Braxton Miller from the middle of the pack, said, uh-uh, you're walking with me. It's your last homecoming. You are up front. He means a lot to his head coach. Urban Meyer's won a whole bunch of games because of Braxton Miller over the years. Well, when you're around practice or training table and you watch Urban Meyer, he's always talking to the players. He's always getting inside their mind. Cardell Jones back in, calling the shots. Junior from Cleveland. And in danger of the sack, he's able to get it out in the direction of Curtis Samuel. Good pressure, Brett Kulka. Yeah, he's under pressure. He's just trying to throw that ball away. Low and outside from the receiver. No one's going to touch it. Third and 21. Let's see what the thought process is here for Ohio State. This would be a bomb of a field goal from where they are on the field. It would be 54 yards if they don't advance the football. Jones dumped down. This will pick up some yards. Elliott gets back to the original line of scrimmage. See, I really like that play call. And anyway, to the dump to the running back, gain some yardage back to put yourself in a position to kick the field goal. You were out of field goal range. You've got to gain some yardage to give them a chance, and that's exactly what they did. Good play call. So Jack Willoughby. The transfer from Duke comes on. He already has completed a double major in both economics and statistics. He's a New Jersey guy, coach. Princeton, New Jersey, Jersey, Lawrenceville Prep. 
44 yards for Willoughby. He has got a massive leg. Oh, my. It was well long enough, but it was off the mark. And that'll keep the score at 21 to 7. That ball was thumped. But the accuracy, not what it needed to be. Time out on the field when we come back. Maryland will be on offense here. Is that what that is? <laughs> you don't know what the outside looks like, but the inside. <laughs> Chapter and verse. Well, you threw me a curveball. <laughs> With Glenn Mason and Rick Bezo, I'm Eric Collins. 112 remaining here in the first half. Let's see how frisky Maryland will be. They scored a touchdown the first time they had the football. But then Ohio State's defense seemed to turn things on. Ball start. Offense number 58. Five-yard penalty remains first down. Redshirt freshman tackle Damian Prince. Yeah, the right tackle just moved a little bit. It'll be interesting to see how Urban Meyer utilizes his timeouts if he gets a chance. Hills has an alley. Hills, first out and a bunch more. Look at the wheels. Perry Hills, can you? Down to the three. Von Bell saved a touchdown, but like a bolt of lightning. Hills picks up 75 yards. Well, you hear coaches talk about contain all the time. Sometimes it's around the end. It's right up the middle. That opened up like the Red Sea, and he went for the distance. And Maryland quickly up to the line of scrimmage. Hills has got to be gassed. Parking out the signal. Design quarter. Not too many of the 100,000 plus here at Ohio Stadium saw that coming. Maryland, they put six on the board. Lickety split. Well, I was mentioning, I, I guarantee Urban Meyer was thinking on the sideline, we got to hold them, use our timeouts, get the ball back, and Perry Hills takes off for a big run. They get it in the end zone, and now you're thinking you got to be kidding me. It took them less than a half of a minute. 29 seconds to go 75 yards with the long run and then the three-yard touchdown score. Randy Edsel's bunch, they're not quitting yet. It's a 75-yard run and then a three-yard score to shock Ohio State. See him running and yeah, got to get that downfield blocking somehow and just screens off the... That was Wes Brown. McMillan and Let's him go, because McMillan can run. He might have caught him. West Brown, the junior tailback, with a vicious block on Raekwon McMillan. Here comes Dontre Wilson. And Wilson still on his feet to the 25. There is West Brown number five. Everyone's walking around congratulating Perry Hills, but West Brown with a very important block to Spring Hills on that long run. I always thought that downfield blocking shows attitude because those guys have to believe the play's gonna get there because if they go to make it after a guy breaks loose, it's too late. You gotta be thinking he's gonna come, he'll be there, and most times he's not, but the time he is, then you're ready. See if the Buckeyes are frisky with 38 picks remaining in the first half. Jones, his pass is caught. Thomas catching everything nowadays. Swarmed at the 34. Clock continues to move. Buckeyes have two timeouts. Tipped pass. That'll stop the clock at 15 seconds. Maryland won the toss to begin the game. They elected to start on defense. So they're going to get the ball first when we come out in the third quarter. 
and unless something shocking happens in the next 15 seconds, they're going to be one score down. Clock will stop after the first down catch. Michael Thomas. Seven yards. Thomas with six catches here in the first half. And the Buckeyes use their second timeout. Glenn Mason, we watched the game last week, Indiana and Ohio State, and Ohio State looked fairly comfortable throughout, yet had to withstand a last-minute drive that almost tied the game for Indiana. Same thing kind of right here. Looks like Ohio State in control, but they've only got a one-score lead. Yeah, they've given up two big plays defensively for to Maryland, which really is the difference. And, you know, you look at Ohio State offense, they've solved some of the problems that they talked about. Let's not forget that Ezekiel Elliott, from an offensive standpoint, took over that second half. Should be interesting. Second time in the last two weeks that they have allowed a quarterback to have a 70-yard run or more. Xander Diamant got him for a touchdown a week ago. Braxton Miller so shifty. Crosses over the 50-yard line, and a timeout is called. There's still three seconds remaining on the game clock. And Urban Meyer uses his final timeout. Again, in the open field, not many guys are more dangerous than Braxton Miller. And he gets it up right there past midfield. You got three seconds left, so you know the Hail Mary's coming. The only reason to call the timeout would be for that. Well, Urban Meyer said on our checklist, get Braxton Miller involved more. Get better in the red zone. Bring in JT Barrett for that. Big check marks next to both of those categories for Ohio State. 90 total yards for Braxton Miller here in the first 30 minutes. No one in the country has a bigger arm than Cardell Jones. He's just going to throw it up for grabs, I'd assume? Absolutely. There's a reason why they call him 12 gauge. He's got a shotgun for arm. You give him time. He's outside. Just a three man rush to throw to the end zone. Tipped and incomplete. Buckeyes had three men surrounding it. And it falls harmlessly to the turf. I might add, he threw that all the way to the end zone with a flick of the wrist. Had a chance. So, 30 minutes in the book. Protecting the football. He's making the decisions. They're playing a lot of different guys, but either you're getting better or you're worse. You got to think Jones is getting better. Perry Hills also has 97 of Maryland's 135 rushing yards. It has been a difficult couple of days around this Maryland football program. Randy Edsel, fifth year, in charge of the football team. Multiple media outlets reporting that his job is in jeopardy and that he will be replaced after today's game, win or lose. That being said, Randy Edsel's team is playing really hard for him. Will Likely spins out of a couple of would-be tacklers' arms and gets out across the 30-yard line. Yeah, just to build on that with all the speculation about Coach Edsel, I think everybody was wondering how would the Terrapins play today because they're under a lot of, you know, distractions also. And what we've seen right here, I think they're playing their tails off for their coach. We watched him during the walkthrough yesterday. You can tell that Randy has a good relationship with his players. They feel for him. They like to send him out with a victory if this is his last game. And you can make no doubt that he picked the right quarterback today. Perry Hills has produced two touchdowns. Maryland had all of six points in the last 120 minutes in games against West Virginia and Michigan. Lee Vern Jacobs with the catch. Von Bell the tackle, a pickup of four, maybe five yards. Mm, Eli Apple is having a hard time getting away from that block on the edge. Yeah, you saw the Maryland player throws his hands up like, I'm not guilty. That works. Neither side with a turnover in the first half. Good pitching catch, Avery Edwards. True freshman tight end, picks up 14 yards. Well, you can see it right here. He puts the ball 
Might have been ticked there, a little, tipped a little bit, but he puts it on the man. Let's not forget, in the first half, he had a couple passes right on the money where the receivers dropped it. Perry Hills has come out of the locker room and completed his first two passes here in the second half. Maryland down, but only by seven. Joey Bosa on the loose, lays a lick on the quarterback, but it may have been illegal. Personal foul, luffing the passer. We're targeting defense number 97. 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. Plays under review. With targeting was the huge couple of words. Did he lead with his head? Was there helmet to helmet contact? This is critical. This play is being reviewed. But when you hear the word targeting, I would say it's close. You've got to look to contact to the helmet, helmet to helmet, crown of the hel helmet. Look at the contact up high by the shoulder pad. Joey Bosa, a frustrated player you would imagine. Still looking for his first full sack of the year. Had a free shot at the quarterback, took it, and he was late. And he was high. Now the question is how high? But you know, the, the, the officials, they are going to protect the quarterback as they well should. And I know that the Ohio State coaches, just like all coaches, coach their players up, teach their players, warn their players that, you know, if you're in that in-between, they're going to give the benefit of the doubt to the quarterback. And just a reminder, when we're talking about targeting, that means a player has to leave the field immediately and miss the next half of play. So if there is indeed targeting attached to this penalty for Joey Bosa, not only would he have to go to the locker room, but he would not play in the first half next week in Ohio State's game against Penn State. Let's see how Urban Meyer reacted to that call and yeah, his best defensive player. After review, there is no foul for targeting. However, by rule, the 15 yard penalty for roughing the passer is enforced. 15 yards, first down. Do you agree with that call? Yeah, I, I do. I, you know, I looked at it, it was high, but it looked to me like it was on the shoulder pads, not the helmet, and that's the key. Buckeyes and their fans will happily give up the 15 yards if they don't have to give up Joey Bosa for virtually a full game. Yeah, it's it's in between there, but I think it's on the shoulder pad. There's no doubt he could have pulled off, and that's what he should have done. So the ball at the 31-yard line. Buckeyes show blitz. Brandon Ross over 2,000 rushing yards in his career. Picks up seven yards, tackled by Raekwon McMillan. McMillan tied for the Big Ten lead in tackles coming into this game. He has been busy this afternoon as well. Blitz is picked up, and that pass too hot to handle, looking for D.J. Moore. That's Hill's first incompletion of this drive, had completed his first three passes. Yeah, it's a, yeah, a little behind him. It would have been a great catch. Got to throw a better ball than that, Barry. Third down and three. An elite field goal kicker, but this may be four down territory if they don't get the first down here. Quarterback keeps 
lose it. Hills, he's got to be close. Gary and Conley comes up from his quarterback spot to make the tackle. Now I think there's a decision to be made on that fourth. Oh, if it's fourth down and short, it's like first down. They're going to give him the line to get. It's a first down. We've had a bunch of spots that were right on that line. Hills has now gone over 100 yards rushing. the other day you can see it a little misdirection reverse and he hesitates there for a second I thinking about going outside I think he made a good decision going inside but you know with all this stuff going on you go for broke what the heck what do you got to lose it's a gain of nine on first down Maryland solidly in the red zone a chance to tie looking for a touchdown Down to the four-yard line. That was Will Likely with an opportunity. The quarterback comes in and plays offense for the first time this year. Well, you know, I kind of asked that question the other day with uh, some of the receivers that they've lost in the past, and you got a guy like Will Likely. It's such a good punt return guy. Why not use him on offense a little bit? Likely gets him a first down and goal at the four-yard line. He's back on the sideline. Brandon Ross next to Hills. Hills keeps it. Touchdown, Maryland! If you're at home and you can tell me you expected this, you're probably the only one. Maryland. An extra point away from tying this game at 21. And Randy Edsel. What is his team fashioning? Dating back to the second quarter, two touchdowns in the last 426 of game time. Brad Craddock, last year's Lou Groza Award winner, the extra point, and we're tied at 21. Times have you heard coaches talk about the first drive of the second half is so important. How about that drive by Maryland? Got to be impressed. Huge turning point in this game. Second quarter, final moments of the first half. Ohio State's up 21 to 7. They have Maryland pinned deep. It's first down and 15. Perry Hills gets that long run to the goal line. Ever since then, everything has changed in the Buckeyes' world. They had the Terps on the ropes. They let him back up. Dontre Wilson to the 30. Now the second half of the game against Indiana a week ago belonged to Ezekiel Elliott. He had three touchdown runs of over 50 yards. This is a guy who has proven himself the best of the best. Yeah, he had all of college football over the last two seasons, 2,607 yards. Yeah, 274 yards, but 243 in the second half. And it seems like the later the game is, the better he is. This direction, Elliott picks up four on first down, maybe three. Quentin Jefferson on the tackle. That front four. For Maryland's been pretty good. Yannick and Gokwe, Quentin Jefferson, Azubuke, you can do, and Roman Braglio, for the most part, those guys have plugged all the holes. Good chunk of yardage for Elliott. Back to back carries for him. Talking about that Maryland defense, talking to the Ohio State coaches on Friday, I asked their impression. They said, you know, they're very well coached, they have good game plans, and the guys up front are very active. I think they were right. Normally, Elliott averages 7.3 yards per carry. He's getting about half that this afternoon. No 
another bullet. Braxton, oh, that's Jalen Marshall. Stumbles across the 50, 12 yards on first down. Well, you get two on one out there, and one guy's going to catch it, and the other man's going to block it. Jalen Marshall's one of those guys, a skill athlete. You give him room, look out. Marshall and Miller, two high school legends here in Ohio as high school quarterbacks now playing receiver. Cardell Jones wants to throw. Nobody open. Looking for help. Probably a good decision. Let's go back to that play we talked about the Jalen Marshall when I said two on one. You know why it's two on one? Because Maryland's playing an extra guy in the box because they're worried about Ezekiel Elliott. So when the quarterback sees that, he gets the ball to the outside. And that's that's why you have to be balanced. Mm. Wow. Sean Davis, maybe the most physical corner in the Big Ten. He laid a lick on Braxton Miller when he was all the way on the other side of the field. Buckeyes call timeout. First charge, timeout of the half. Ohio State. Coach, I want to talk to you about that play when we come back. We'll be back. Official timeout, so Ohio State still has all three. But Price has to remain out for a play. Jamarco Jones, a sophomore from Chicago, comes in on that offensive front wall. So it appears as if Price will come in after this play. But for now, Jamarco Jones getting playing time. And Ohio State not charged with a timeout. Second down and 10. Little dump down Elliott with the catch. Coach, I want to ask you, we saw before we went to the break, the hit by Sean Davis on Braxton Miller way away from the play. What was that all about, and do you agree with it? No, I don't agree with it. That was a foolish play by Davis. I mean, he's defenseless. He's not in the play. He's looking. He's lucky he didn't get flagged by the official there. They're in the ball game. Why would you want to do that, potentially give Ohio State a first down and field position. Foolish play by him. Third down and seven. Jones in trouble, had to get it away before he wanted to. It's incomplete. Jermaine Carter was all over Jones. And the Buckeyes will have to punt the football away. You know, I want to get back to the point you made before where all of a sudden Maryland makes a play and then they start dominating the game. It seems like that's what we call momentum. It's a funny thing. When you got it, you want to keep it. When you don't have it, you've got to do something to get it back. Will likely stays away from the football. And it will be downed at the two. Good special teams for Ohio State. Well, we have some wonderful matchups right here on BTN. Coming up next, we will have two teams ranked in the top 20, Northwestern and Michigan. Northwestern, perfect so far this year. They have been terrific for Pat Fitzgerald. And tonight, 8 o'clock Eastern time, the fourth-ranked team in the country, led by Connor Cook, Michigan State, got to take on the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. All of that right here on BTN. And the day starting in grand fashion. Glenn Mason with uh, a real good uh, one. We got the number one team in the country in Maryland. You know, when you're coming out of your end zone like this, I always like when a team takes a deep shot. Element of surprise, go for the home run. Wes Brown and Shane Cockrell in the backfield next to Perry Hills. Option football. This will give them some breathing room at least. They're going to get out to the nine-yard line. One other factor for Ohio State to consider. They played the late afternoon game last week against Indiana, and Indiana pressured their defense. There were five starting players for Ohio State defensively that played all 99 plays. Plus kicking plays. So fatigue may be an issue. You wonder about the conditioning for the Buckeyes.
Trying to get to the edge. Ty Johnson not going to get there. Raekwon McMillan wraps him up. McMillan does what he wants on the football field. Yeah, this is a poorly blocked play inside in the perimeter. The wide receiver thought he had man coverage and he went and cracked, but it was zone. So when he cracked, the corner was just sitting there. Must contain the quarterback. Looking for Lieber and Jacobs. Punk team will come on. I talked about containing the quarterback. You can see there were no line stunts. It was a four-man rush. Everybody was going to stay in their lane. He might not get to the quarterback, but he was not going to pull it down and scramble. Nicholas Pritchard, true freshman. Marshall stays away. Oh, my! He got close to it and gets away. It's down close to midfield. 41-yard punt. No return. Urban Meyer's team living dangerously here in Columbus. Currently on an 18-game winning streak. When Mason, you know a thing or two about long winning streaks when you were a player here at Ohio State. 22 consecutive wins. You were part of that mix in the late 60s. Yeah, but right now, the only thing Urban Meyer's worried about is beating Maryland. He's in a ball game. Cardell Jones pumping. Has a man open. It's Marshall! Touchdown! Ohio State! Look how he just easily throws that ball downfield. What an arm. Couple of Ohio kids at Clevelander to a Cincinnati guy. We got both ends of the state covered. Jack Willoughby trying to make it a seven-point lead. And Ohio State, a little bit of breathing room. 28-21 is our score. 21. And a poor kickoff. That will be a penalty. Great starting field position for Maryland as they try and grab a little bit of momentum back. Yeah, that's one of those things. You, you get the momentum back, and then your kicker kicks the ball out of bounds, giving the opposition good field position, and you kick off out of bounds. Kicking team, the ball be placed at the 35 yard line, first down. And your Urban Meyer, or any coach, you stand there and you think, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> He's talking to Willoughby and said, you know what, that may work at Duke, but this is Ohio yeah. State. I'm going to send you back to Princeton, New Jersey, and do that again. <laughs> How does a smart guy who graduated from Duke do that, huh? <laughs> well, the Maryland Terrapins have been ferocious with their fight this afternoon. They haven't given a core to Ohio State. This is a team that has dealt with things that most teams never have to deal with. Last couple of days, widespread media speculation that Randy Edsel, their head coach, will be dismissed after today's game, but they have not missed a beat. They played hard the entire game, and Perry Hills is the right quarterback for this game for Randy Edsel. Yeah, he, he's a gutsy kid. You can see him reaching for the first down little shove there got that but you know I look at him and the thing that comes to mind more than he is a gutsy performer Maryland has been to bowl games in each of the last two seasons they won road games at Michigan at Penn State a year ago this is a team with a bit of a pedigree 
quarterback keeper, and Hills met with force by Perry, but not before a gain of eight yards. Hills is well over 100 yards rushing. He's now up to 123 yards. It's the guy who started the first two games of the year and then was benched. Yeah, the way he's playing today, I'm sure Randy Etzel's questioning that decision. Maryland outrushing Ohio State by a wide margin. Hills waiting for a play to develop. Ball's loose! There's a flag down on the field. The ball is loose. You know, I'm really glad they put that rule in this year where you can't shove or pull guys off the pile. Well, that cleaned that up real quick. Ball's definitely out. I think it was Sam Hubbard Three on the who field forced fumble the fumble. Recovered by the offense. Holding, 76 offense. 10 yard penalty, repeat second down. Michael Dunn starting his 32nd consecutive game. Whistled for the hold. And Maryland is just thrilled to have the football back. They'll happily retreat 10 yards. That could have been a turnover. And giving the ball to Ohio State in great field position. Yeah, you see 76. He gets beat inside right there. And then he grabs Holden, tackled him to the ground. Michael Dunn holding Sam Hubbard on Hubbard's pass rush. Joshua Perry looks like a defensive lineman. He's a big linebacker. 6'4", 254 pounds for Galena, Ohio, only Tangy High School. Underneath to Moore, tackle made at the 43-yard line. It's a good call, missile screen, low risk, high reward if it's executed. But look at the effort, holding on for dear life. Red shirts rallying to the football. Richard to punt it away. Not a great kick. It'll be down close to the 35-yard line. Just 23 yards on that punt. Liam, hurry up. Yeah, you know, I would be a bit surprised to see Ohio State go more up-tempo now. You know, they got them back on their heels. Get Elliott going, get the ball to Miller. But, you know, when you got a guy in the run, which I think they got Maryland on the run right now, keep him running. Ezekiel Elliott in the backfield. They fake it to him. And Cardell Jones tackled at the line of scrimmage. Jalen Brooks with the tackle. Jalen Brooks moving over, his life changing. He was the strong side linebacker a week ago, but multiple injuries, and he's now playing the weak side linebacker away from the tight end. Jalen Brooks has performed well in his new role. Jalen Marshall, spin move to the 45-yard line. Well, this is all Jalen Marshall because it's not two on one, it's two on two out there. And there's a defender in great shape right there, but he makes the spin, 
Then he gets going north and south. That guy's a big play waiting to happen. It's enough for the first down. Three receivers in the game. Nick Bennett to tight end. This is Elliott. Across midfield, gain of nine, maybe ten. He's got another first down. Let's check in with Rick. Rick, what's going on? Well, Eric, remember, Ezekiel Elliott had 243 of those 274 yards in the second half last week when I spoke to Maryland D.C. Keith Zinski. He said those runs were not because of huge holes. He says he can turn a six-inch gap into a 60-yard run. He gave him the ultimate compliment, called him, quote, a giant pain in the butt. <laughs> Out of the backfield, Elliott showing off those supreme hands. Down to the 35-yard line, Ezekiel Elliott. That's a... Nice honor to say he's a great <laughs> second half player. Well, that's right. He gets stronger as the game goes on. And this guy is a complete guy. We know how he can run the football. We know how he can catch the football. We see how he blocks and picking up blitzes. And when he doesn't have the ball, he blocks for the other guys. And he doesn't kind of wave his arm after a six yard run and say, I need to come out, bring in a fresh set of legs. No, he says, feed me. You saw that before. Give me the ball. I'm ready to go. Elliott's got it. He's zigging. He's zagging. He's down the right sideline and pushed out of bounds inside the 20 at the 15. He stepped out of the 12 yard line. They mark him at the 15. He's got 40 rushing yards this quarter. He's up to 69 yards in the game. Two tight end for more formation for Ohio State. This is JT Barrett's design quarterback keeper. What we saw in the first half, Glenn Mason. Barrett comes in in red zone opportunities. Yeah, you know, and I like the idea, you know, if you, you just can't give lip service that we don't like what's going on in the red zone and we're going to make some changes. I think putting him in there makes sense and sends a message to everybody that we get down to the red zone, we're going to play the guys that can finish the job and get the ball in the end zone. We've got a lot of experience. Barrett's still in calling the signals. He's got Elliott next to him, second and four. Played beautifully by Maryland, but there is a flag down. A.J. Hendy on the tackle was their face mask. Yes, there was. Hendy got a little bit handsy. Personal foul, face mask, defense number 19. Penalized half the distance to the goal line, automatic. First down. Sometimes you just brush your hand across the face mask and get called, but that was more than that. And he got his money through. Sophomore quarterback Barrett out of the pistol. Quick hitter. Incomplete looking for Thomas. There's a flag down on the field. Will likely on the coverage, and it's likely he's going to get whistled for pass interference. Well, the ball was underthrown and likely was in good position. He's got to turn back and look for the football. As you can see, he ran right Pass to the receiver. Defense number four. Foul occurred in the end zone. Waste the ball at the two-yard line. Automatic first down. Likely stands five feet seven inches tall. He's guarding Michael Thomas, who's six three. That's eight inches that Thomas has got on Likely. Well, he was beat on the bait, and he knew it. The ball would have been thrown properly. There wouldn't have been any pass interference. It just would have been a touchdown. They've got the same matchup. Bottom of the screen right now. Likely trying to check with Thomas. Running play. Elliott! Stop short. Well, they're getting 
good push right there. There's no quitting that Maryland team on defense. You gotta be impressed with that goal line defense right there. I like the call, they just didn't get in the end zone. Now the Buckeyes will spread things out. Five receiver formation. Barrett keeps it. Barrett, touchdown! His second. He's just too good not to use. JT Barrett back in the mix, and he has paid off in aces for Ohio State. They got a lot of good guys not to use out there that I see. But you're right, JT Barrett, there's something about him. He led the team last year when Braxton Miller couldn't play. And let's face it, if he didn't get hurt, Cardell Jones never would have had a chance to do what he did. Good football player. Extra point is true. 35, 21. The number one team in the country leading Maryland. It's back to their widest margin. They're leading by 14. They were up by 14 in the first half, 21-7 as well. Ball bounces picked up by Likely. And he is swarmed. Tackled at the 10-yard line. Tough starting field position for the Terrapins. Now, BTN's award-winning original series is back. It's the show with an unprecedented look inside the Big Ten season, The Journey. Big Ten Football 2015, it returns on Wednesday, 9 o'clock Eastern time, right here on BTN. Northwestern, they've got a special linebacker in sophomore Anthony Walker. There will be an up-close look at his relationship with his father coming out of South Florida, plus comprehensive highlights of the game between Northwestern and Michigan from Ann Arbor. A lot of different things going on, and that is a must-see, wonderfully produced series that comes on every year right here on BTN. 11 ticks remaining here in the third quarter. Perry Hills heading for the hills. Out across the 25 to the 26. He has been really good at times this afternoon. Well, they brought a linebacker, but he went for the fake. He thought the ball was handed off, and he was wrong, and there he went. Well, Hills looks like he's in a bit of discomfort. Hopefully it is nothing. He'll have a little bit of time to catch a blow. We've reached the end of the third quarter. Four fingers in the air. The fourth quarter is next. The number one team in the country, Ohio State. They've still got some work to do for Ohio State on top of Maryland, 35-21. With my partner, Glenn Mason, and Rick Pizzo, I'm Eric Collins. Heavy as the head that wears the crown. It's hard being on top of the heap. Ohio State has been challenged but they're kind of comfortable right now. Yeah, they're starting to pull away, but I am really impressed with Maryland. They're well coached. They're playing hard. They're in a hostile environment. A lot of distractions. They've got to be pleased with this effort so far. Maryland has the football. Down 14. They have run the football for 193 yards against this vaunted silver bullet defense. Let's go to Mike Hall for a T-Mobile studio update. Eric, big game with Iowa and Illinois. Look at Jordan Kanziri up jump the boogie and roll. He doesn't even get touched. 75 yards for the score. He's got 191 on the day. That's a career high. And Iowa's up by 10 early in the fourth. Terrific stuff. I love the cultural references that Mike Hall has. He is by far the hippest of any of the guys that we have back in the studio. Second down carry by Brandon Ross. Nets three yards. It'll bring up third down. Well, Maryland needs to keep that offense on the field. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, you got to do that. I, if I'm Maryland right now, you just can't push the panic button. Keep doing what you're doing. Get the running game going. Get Ross going. Get the quarterback going. Hit some passes and then take that deep shot. Converted just one of their last seven. 
Laquan McMillan showing blitz. Here he comes. Hills. Oh, my. He's got the first down, but he pays the price. Darren Lee and Perry Hills met with force a pickup of nine. Well, we talked about the things that Ohio State was going to address last week. I promise you, in practice, Luke Fickle, Urban Meyer, with that defensive players, you got to contain. They've lost contain on the outside, on the inside. They're getting burned by. You've got to contain who's ever got the ball in his hands. The quarterback, Perry Hills, has more rushing yards than Ezekiel Elliott. He has more rushing yards than Ohio State as a team. 138 yards for Hills on the ground. He's looking for more. Tucks and runs. Hills across midfield. With more on Perry Hills, let's check in with Rick. Eric, not just Perry Hills, but this entire offense, the Terps and especially the offensive line starting to believe just over there, hearing them use words like spoiled, entitled, and not number one when describing what they're seeing from Ohio State. Mm. Interesting word choices. There's a flag down on the field. Some Buckeyes were slow to get off the field. Offense, all 11 players were not set prior to the snap. Five-yard penalty remains first down. Maryland was in such a hurry to catch Ohio State with 12 men on the field that they weren't set. Yeah, that's the quarterback's responsibility, even though that you're going to hurry up. He has to check everybody to make sure everybody is set. <laughs> That's now eight penalties on Maryland. Eight penalties for 58 yards. Buckeyes blitz picked up nicely. Wes Brown rumbles forward for nine yards. Does Ohio State change anything conceptually defensively up by 14 in the fourth quarter? No, I, I think they still continue to play the same thing. Other than if you're losing contain because you're blitzing, I'd go back to the four-man rush because that's what's really been hurting you. Hills caught from behind. Tracy Sprinkle in the mix. Sam Hubbard also credited with part of the tackle. Mm. Everyone wants to check this out. Third down and five. Welcome to the horseshoe. And now the crowd becomes a participant, not just a spectator. Joey Bosa had been off the field. He's back on the field now. Going to have his ears pinned back. just misses the first time through but gets him the second time around Bosa and Taekwon Lewis couple of ends meeting in the middle well watch Bosa come he puts the big rush on and now the quarterback steps up but here comes the contain aspect he can't get back inside and outside and run downfield that is good defense I'm not the official scorer but in my eyes, that's the first full sack of the year for Joey Bosa. On fourth down and eight, Maryland going to go for it and a timeout called by Ohio first State. First charge. Timeout of the half. Ohio State. Full Welcome timeout. back. And Len Mason, what's the call here for Maryland? Well, I don't know. I questioned the call to begin with. You're only down two scores and almost 11 minutes to go in the game. If you punt it away, maybe if you get a turnover or a stop, you get a score on offense, you're right in it. If you don't get it, it's good field position. Empty backfield. Fourth down and eight. Hills is going to run. Needs to get to the 38. He's got it and then some. I'll tell you what. Perry Hills has been just what the Terrapins have needed. He picks up 15 yards and moves the chains. Yeah, credit Maryland and, and be critical of Ohio State, this isn't the first time they've let him out. 
goes in there and take, he's a tough kid. Wes Brown runs into a wall. The numbers for Perry Hills are really accomplished. 164 rushing yards for Hills, much to the chagrin of Urban Meyer. Yeah, you know what? That's it's basic fundamentals. And when you, you know, it's one thing if you get beat once, but it's been a number of times, and that's why Coach Meyer's so upset. This time, play diagnosed beautifully. Taekwon Lewis. It'll bring up third down and nine. When a quarterback is having a good running day, is there any particular element of the defense that you can point the finger at? Is it a middle linebacker issue? No, to, to me, I would say it's the defensive line. They've given up contained. They've got out of their rush lanes. They got past the quarterback. They had line stunts, but they let him up the middle. It's the four guys up front. Hills finally brought down. He is slippery right at the line of scrimmage. Lewis and Raekwon McMillan combined to stop him. It's fourth down and nine. Now what's the decision, Glenn Mason? Well, if you if you went for it on fourth down and, and long at midfield, you know you're going to do it here. I'd go with empty backfield set again. I'd call a pass play. And if they haven't learned their lessons and contain me, I'm going to take off and run. It would be a really long field goal for the best field goal kicker in the country in Brad Craddock. But they want seven. And a flag flies. False start. Offense, number 58. Five-yard penalty remains. Fourth down. Yeah, you got Damian Prince right there, and Ohio State showing the blitz. He gets a little nervous, and I would, too. I got to block Joey Bosa wide outside, meaning he moved a little bit. Lost his team five yards. Well, they're down 14 points, but this is field goal range for the best kicker in the country, Brad Craddock, but they don't want three points. No, I, 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 I agree this. I don't think that the... I really don't think that the field goal is the play here. You got it before. Let's see what you can do right here. You need to score. Third down in Twinsburg, basically. Down goes Hills. Joey Bosa, Taekwon Lewis combined for the sack. Joey Bosa is a handful. What a day for number 97. to run the offense. Ohio State's up by 14 points, 7.47 remaining. We've still got a couple of doozies coming your way right here on BTN. Northwestern, a perfect 5-0, taking on Michigan and Ann Arbor. It's a 3.30 Eastern time start. Later tonight, the fourth-ranked Michigan State Spartans taking on Rutgers. Design quarterback run, Barrett. Barrett down inside the 35. 23 zigzagging yards for Barrett. Yeah, he's a runner. A lot more effective runner than Cardell Jones. And I keep waiting for Ezekiel to take one of those trademark runs to the house. Here's Elliott. Elliott has had 10 consecutive 100-yard games. He just picks up 11 on that carry. So Elliott now up to 82 yards. Elliott with daylight down to the 15. You know, Eric, we talk about players that other people feed off of. Well, the crowd here in Ohio Stadium feeds off of number 15, Ezekiel Elliott. 
Anthony Nixon. He was the first man to get to Ezekiel Elliott. He's down on the field. Maryland, they've got a bye next week. Next time they will play will be against Penn State, a team they beat a year ago. That's October 24th. Ohio State's next game will be against Penn State. That will be a week from today. You know, if the rumors are true, you see, we saw Coach Edsel walking out there, checking on his player. That comes first and foremost right there. So Nixon being helped to the side of the field. Elliott is now up to 90 rushing yards, 61 of them coming after intermission. Alvin Hill, number 27, has replaced Nixon at one of the safety spots. Barrett swung down from behind. That'll be a loss back to the 20-yard line. It's important to remember, Brett, JT Barrett had his season end in the Michigan game late in November with a significant leg injury. So he's had to rehab that. He's had to deal with fighting for a starting spot. But all that time, sitting and watching Cardell Jones, he's getting healthier. At least his body's feeling better, you'd imagine. Look at this. Elliott! Touchdown, Buckeyes! And with that, Elliott goes over 100 yards for the 11th consecutive game. six on extra points this afternoon. Ohio State has made it to the red zone four times. They've a smorgasbord of fantastic football on BTN this afternoon. Let's take a look at the Dr. Pepper play of the game. Happened back in the first half. Braxton Miller laying out. This guy, one of the best athletes in the country, showing you what he's got. And that's the one of a kind Dr. Pepper play of the game. Braxton Miller's been involved. JT Barrett's been involved. Cardell Jones has quarterback the majority of the way. Ezekiel Elliott, two touchdown, 100 yards. Everyone's getting their share this afternoon. Barry Hills will remain in at quarterback. He's been the right choice. He replaced Caleb Rowe, who had started the last three games and dealt with turnover issues. Barry Hills has fumbled once today, didn't even lose it. We haven't had a turnover for either side. You had to say that, didn't you? I don't like anyone on the field just listening to what I'm saying. Well, we'll see. <laughs> Perry Hills, our Duluth trading hardest working player. He has carried the football 23 times, rushed for a career high 153 yards, a couple of touchdowns. He's also completed some important passes. Remember, Maryland had a grand total of six points in the last eight quarters of football in losses against Michigan and also against West Virginia. But Perry Hills has turned things around. His toughness, his ability to 
contributing to 21 points scored for the Terrapins. Yeah, you see him get outside Bosa there, and he's under duress, and he throws the ball. And the secondary Ohio State tried to jump that route. They missed it. If that receiver would have caught it, nothing but green grass. Hill steps up in the pocket, throws to no one in particular. It's picked off. Buckeyes have the football. Time is Powell. There's the first turnover of the game. I need to turn off my microphone. <laughs> what did I tell you? I've seen it happen too many times. Yeah. Now that was a that was a desperation pass. He overthrew everybody, and Time is Powell just had it. Just had to sit back there and play center field and pick it off. And yeah, Joey Bosa is not making life easy for Perry Hills. The constant pressure. Cardell Jones back into the game. Michael Thomas, the catch inside the 20. Thomas had a case of the drop season in the first quarter. He's been sure-handed ever since. Yeah, and I'm sure some people are saying, wait a minute, you know, you're, you got a commanding lead in this game and six minutes to go and you're still throwing the football. That's their offense. They look over there. It's a numbers game. If you have too many buys in the box, they're going to throw it outside. That's just the way it is. You don't want to throw it outside, don't put too many guys inside. JT Barrett alternates now with Cardell Jones. Michael Thomas over the century mark. He's got 107 receiving yards. seems to have changed for the Scarlet and Gray. They have figured things out offensively here in the second half. What they want to be. Well, they have sure offensively corrected a lot of the problems that they had going in this game. And you know what happens to a team? It happens to almost all teams. You go through and all of a sudden you look at that scoreboard and the time's going out. And it's not that you quit, but your will to succeed still isn't exactly the same as it was in the beginning. It just happens. We were tied at 21 apiece. The Buckeyes have ran off 28 consecutive points. What a day, JT Barrett. Ohio State, six for six in the red zone with six touchdowns this afternoon. Yeah, and they only had six touchdowns in the red zone prior to this game. And they look awful effective. You get there, you go six for six, you know you're going to win a lot of football games. This actually was a closely contested game through the first three quarters for the most part. It was a 21-21 tie midway through the third quarter. Cardell Jones inching close to the 300-yard passing day. Perry Hills has done his part to keep Maryland in this one. But the Buckeyes rushing game, five rushing touchdowns, mean they're now up to 17 rushing touchdowns in six games this year. Yeah, obviously they're a very talented group. But you think what Maryland did right before the half and the first possession driving down of the second half that's what made it a ball game but now things have changed Hills his pass is complete but only a gain of three or four yards DJ Moore had the knee down when he made the catch Hills puts everything into that by Lieburn Jacobs. Good defense played out on the edge, but Jacobs wins the battle. Pickup of seven and a first down. Yeah, that was closely covered, but he got it in there, but a little too close to cover. That could be picked off going the other way. In 
complete. And Mason, you had a special chance today. I saw you talking with Earl Bruce before the game. Huge name in Ohio coaching history. Yeah, you know, to think uh, of Coach, where he was an assistant coach here when I was a player, and then I had the opportunity to privilege for coaching for him at Iowa State, and then back here again at Ohio State. You know, he's just a great guy, cares about the players, had a winning record against Michigan. That's really it, the end of the day. That's, that's how you're measured at Ohio State. How did you do against the Wolverines? Dangerous pass, intercepted. Buckeyes have the football. Sam Hubbard. You know, Sam Hubbard's an interesting story. Played at Cincinnati Bowler High School, and I think I got the story right. I think uh, Urban Meyer was down there recruiting, saw him in gym class or something. It was a, a safety. They thought they'd make him a linebacker, and now he's a defensive end. Six five, two 265 pounds, a converted high school safety. My goodness. We saw Larry Johnson, the defensive line coach down there. Little pop pass to Andre Willis. Wilson. And Wilson out to the 41-yard line. Well, we may have seen the last of Ezekiel Elliott. Elliott got his 100 yards, had a couple of rushing touchdowns. Since you have such a historical perspective about Ohio State football, I want to ask you about Ezekiel Elliott and how he compares. Barrett with the run, that'll be a first down. Is there another running back? And think of all the great ones that have come through Columbus. Is there another running back that he reminds you of? Yeah. Keith Byers, Antonio Pittman, Raymond Harris, John Brockington, just, Jim Otis. Just keep going. Yeah, you know. Wells. You know what I think he means to this team? He means the same to this team as Carlos Hyde did a few years ago. He's the spark. He has the ability to put this offensive team on his back. The toughness gets everybody excited. In recent history, that's who I compare him to. Of all those Ohio State running backs that I just listed, I think I said keep five. I can't think of one that ever got knocked backwards. Number 75. <laughs> Five-yard penalty remains. First down. Evan Lyle getting a chance to play. And you think about an Ohio State running back, they fall forward, and they finish off a run. Well, with the talent they have here, if you don't fall forward, they put the next guy in. That's the way that goes. You Did know? I forget Eddie George, too? Yeah, you forgot oh, Eddie. He only went to Heisman. <laughs> Barrett. Myers said it all spring summer and fall it's a wonderful problem to have three elite athletes capable of playing winning quarterback at Ohio State Cardell Jones Braxton Miller JT Bear and, I, and I've got to say Jim Otis as the fullback because I don't be mad at me you know he'll say <laughs> hell on me good burst through that hole to get to the 30 yard line Briante Dunn out of Canton Ohio sprints forward for 10 Barrett's not the biggest guy. He's not the fastest guy. He's not the shiftiest guy. But he's darn near close to the best runner in college football with what he can do as a quarterback. Yeah. He just doesn't go down. Well, you know, that's that's a result of this Urban Meyer spread offense. You know, they, they spread the offense. What they really do is they spread the defense out, and you get a lot of one-on-one -on -one situations. Oh, terrible snap. Barrett's going to have to fall on it. Now that's something to work on for Ohio State. A big negative play. The center in the game right now is Brady Taylor. I hate the fact that that's the only time I've called his name. But Brady Taylor with a bad snap. Well, JT Barrett, obviously he was surprised by that snap. Went right by his head. The heads-up thing he did, he 
fell on the football. Don't take a bad play and make it worse. But he surely wasn't ready for that coming. Oh, and Brady Taylor played in high school. His quarterback was nine feet tall, so that was generally immoral. <laughs> <laughs> so Maryland takes over. Tavon Jacobs gets out of bounds. Did a good job picking the blitz up. You picked the blitz up. You got man on man coverage on the outside. There's got to be a gimme throw someplace. He found him, put the ball in the money. Randy Edsel after today's game, after struggling mightily against Michigan a week ago, after struggling against West Virginia to put points on the board, what will be his conversation in the locker room? What did he enjoy? What can he improve upon when he looks at the film? Well, you know, I, I, as a coach, you always look first at the negative stuff. I hate to say that, you know, where you can get better. I think that, that you know, you look at it right there and, uh, you know, either either I think you're getting better or you're getting worse. Obviously, this group's getting better from what we've seen. And 21 points against one of the best defenses in the country after being shut out against Michigan and after scoring just six points against West Virginia. Remember, this game was tied at 21 in the third quarter. Perry Hills to the 21. He's now up to 166. Remember in college, if you get sacked, that goes against your rushing total. So he goes forward 10 yards, loses six or seven every once in a while. But if Perry Hills isn't the quarterback next time they play, it would be a shocker considering how well he's played. Hills throws a dart. Good pass under duress. DeAndre Lane gets it inside the 10. You know, there's been a lot of things that has impressed me about this young man, Perry Hills, not just because he's running the ball, but you see, he's under duress. His poise, he doesn't panic. He keeps his eyes downfield. He's had some bad throws, some good throws. He's had some drops. But he's played very, very well today. Option, Hills, to the one. Buckeyes have cleaned out the second union unit. The starters are no longer in the game. Touchdown, Maryland. Wes Brown barrels in. Maryland showing good fight. Hey, we got a touchdown run for West Brown. Simple play executed well. Got to be impressed the performance of the Terrapins today. Brad Craddock, last year winning the Lou Groza Award, named for former Ohio State Buckeye, Lou Groza. The kicker. That was for the touchdown. Randy Edsel put his hands together, calmly says, let's get that extra point. Initially, I thought he was given the sign for two. into the kicker, Craddock. Interesting story about Craddock. Craddock is the Lou Groza Award winner. Lou Groza never actually played a game of varsity football at Ohio State. He played on the freshman team in 1942. Then he went off to World War II. We're talking about the great Cleveland Brown, Lou the Toe Groza. Paul Brown was his coach when he was at Ohio State, remembered him, and when he was starting the Cleveland Browns, he said, I want you to play on my team. And Lou Groza said, I'll do it was an exclusive kicker in the NFL for a while and then developed into a wonderful Hall of Fame caliber tackle. But Lou Groza, who the best college kicker award is named for, actually never kicked in a varsity game as a college player. I'm going to tell you a great Lou Groza story. Okay. After this kick. Okay. 
All who grows all the time. 55 ticks remaining. Only two Big Ten players have won the Luke Rose Award. Nate Ohio Keating State. of Iowa and Mike Nugent here at Ohio State. Let me give you my Luke Rose. Sure. I was an assistant coach here. His son, Judd Rose, was on the team as a tight end. He came down to watch a scrimmage one time, and we had a straight-on kicker like he used to be. He was really struggling, so he came out of the stands, and he asked Earl Bruce, can I just visit with him a little bit? And Earl said, yeah. Lou had his suit on, his tie, a little overweight at that time. He had a bad hip. He was limping, and he's smoking a cigar. And he went down there, and he told, he told our kicker, he said, you know, if the snap is good and the hold is good, I'll make every one. And he stood there with the ball about on the 30-yard line with wingtip shoes on, <laughs> and straight through, he kicked about 20. And I, and you know what? That turned around our kicker immediately because I think he was so embarrassed that Luke Rosen was doing that in his suit, wingtip, cigar. He started kicking well. That's why the Luke Rosen Award is named for him. Yeah, the best. Plus, he played offensive tackle. Plus, he sold insurance in the offseason. Is that true? Absolutely. down by three touchdowns you know you're mr. trivia and you're unbelievable okay but you were talking before about Glen Oak High School sure. up in Star County Dustin Fox no <laughs> what former Big Ten football head coach then became the high school coach at Glen Oak oh you got me Bob Cummins. And Bob Cummins was? At Iowa. After Iowa, he went to Glen Oak. That is good. That's a little deeper than I go. Pardon. That was one of my recruiting areas, and I went in one day, and he was sitting with his feet on the desk, and he looked like he was sleeping. I said, Coach, how you doing? He looked up, and he says, everybody tells me that Glen Oak is a sleeping giant. I'm just trying to hear it snore. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a true story. Yeah, there's players in Northeast Ohio, that's for sure. Mm. Off the mitts of Raycon McMillan in a battle for the ball. It's Ohio State football. Ohio State has Raycon McMillan, one of the linebackers, their middle linebacker on the hands team. Shows you what kind of athlete he is that Urban Meyer trusts his middle linebacker to be on his hands team. Yeah, you got to be a shortstop there. You got to get it off the first bounce. Western and Michigan, huge game for Caleb Thorson. Young quarterback for Northwestern, redshirt freshman in his biggest game to date. Will he be up for the challenge? You saw a chance to see Clayton Thorson a week ago. Yeah. Your thoughts? You know, he, what he's doing there, what they're doing at Northwestern right now, he's a young quarterback. They got a good running back, Justin Jackson, so they're playing to the defense, so they have a real good defense. They don't ask him to do a lot of stuff that they used to ask their quarterbacks. This is with the win today. 19-game winning streak for Ohio State. 26 consecutive Big Ten regular season wins. Urban Meyer has never lost a Big Ten regular season game. Mind blown. He is so far ahead of every other active coach in FBS. He could lose 11 consecutive games and still be the active FBS coach with the highest winning percentage. Just incredible the success he's had at Bowling Green, at Utah, at Florida, and now Ohio State. Well, so much more coming up right here on BTN in the hours to come. Still two more football games involving three ranked teams. You got Northwestern and Michigan from Ann Arbor. That's coming up next right here on BTN. And in prime time, you got the fourth ranked team in the country, Michigan State, taking on the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. I can't wait to get in front of a TV. Well, I've had a blast talking about Ohio State and Maryland yeah. with you, and Rick Pizzo has been fantastic as well. Congratulations to the Buckeyes. It is hard to win Big Ten football games each and every weekend, and they keep doing it. Yeah, it's just unbelievable the consistency of 
this program to keep going on and on and on. And you talk to Urban Meyer, he doesn't worry about the streaks. He talks about the grind. If they prepare the way they should and are doing, they'll continue to be successful. Because of the kneel downs, the Buckeyes finish with 499 yards.